Joshua Jample here back in the broadcast booth. One thing they did not mention in the launch campaign film, the Space Systems Laurel team began the campaign 15 days earlier than expected on JSAT-15. They finished the satellite in Palo Alto, stored it here to get a head start to begin work on Star 1D1. This because they had five, count them, five launches in December at four different sites around the world, all in the same week. We spoke to Grant Gould this morning, he told us all about the Strive for Five campaign, part of the best year ever for SSL for a number of launches, so good work. Ariane Space 2 having a big year, we'll talk about that later <coughs> on. We're coming to you live from the Jupiter Mission Control Building, but another place that's very busy is the Launch Zone, where the launch management teams are working under the direction of Jean-Pierre Barlet today. You just saw him. He's the director of the launch operations set up up there. Right now, two teams are working. One is responsible for the ground operations, the other for readiness of the area and five. The launch operations manager heads up one group. He coordinates with mission control here in Jupiter for the final authorization to launch. And when all the conditions are right, he then okays the automatic sequence at the seven minute mark, which we saw. In all, about 100 people up there, hard at work at launch control. Coming up on two minutes to go until the launch of the 90th Ariane 5 mission. Here in Jupiter, the VIPs and invited guests are very shortly going to start to make their ways outside to watch the liftoff. There are two terraces here on either side of the building that give a fine view onto the pad. And if the skies are clear, they will have quite a sight. Now, you're asking about the weather. Today, the weather has been the best it's been all week. We've had a lot of rain, but we should have a quiet and a beautiful launch tonight. This is a split-screen image of the propellant feeder arms, liquid oxygen on the right, liquid hydrogen on the left. They're putting propellant into the upper stage tanks. Those are the yellow bars in the middle of the screen. And you'll see them pull back at minus five seconds before ignition. So we, uh, it's one of the last things you'll see before liftoff, so we just like to mention it. Coming up on a minute to go, you hear the DDO call out that milestone. A tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Stop, I zero, moins une minute. So we are into the final 60 seconds. Give us a chance to say hello to all of our friends in Japan at Sky Perfect JCSAT, early morning for you. In Rio for Amber Trail Star One, early evening. SSL teams in Palo Alto at just past noon. Hello to Airbus Safran launchers in French Guiana and in Europe and to all our industrial partners and to all of you following on the internet. We hope you're enjoying it. We're going to cut away, let you listen to the DDO as he calls out the final seconds. Watch for the arms to open, which will get the ignition sequence rolling. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décante final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop Allumage PC. Allumage de ZAP, décollage. local time and right on time you saw Ariane 5 began her mission lifting off perfectly from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire beginning her mission the 11th and last this year as the DDO says all is well on board carrying two new telecommuni telecommunication satellites for major regional operators beautiful shots the two boosters are providing 90, that's 9.0 percent of our thrust right now, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher 
velocity. Seven eighty seven eight zero tons at liftoff. She's burning five tons of fuel every second. That's two and a half tons burning in each booster, plus another three hundred kilos per second of fuel burning in the core stage. Ariane five now following the program and the onboard computer, which gives all the orders. Nominal, propulsion nominal. The stage separation, which we'll begin to see. The DDO says all is well on board. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn, so you can follow heads across the Atlantic eastward. Right now, the first flight phase, the single Vulcan core stage engine and the two boosters are burning. Boosters will burn for another 20 seconds, roughly, and the, with the clear skies we have, you should see them flame out and even fall away from the mothership. Les paramètres sont normaux, trajectoire nominale. And you'll hear the DDO call out that milestone as well. He will call out separation of the boosters. There, it looks like the extinction of the boosters. And I believe it is. Yes, you can see them. Separation des étages à propulsion à poudre. That's the Ariane ship continuing her mission. And the two boosters have flamed out above on either side. That's a wonderful picture there. DDO has confirmed separation of the two boosters, they will fall 500 kilometers from shore into a protected area. French Guiana, in part, chosen as a base for its opening on the water. Projector nominal. More on that coming up. Separation is given by two pyrotechnic systems. On the bottom of your screen, our speed and our altitude. Altitude on the left, we're over 100 kilometers up, and our speed, a little over 2 kilometers per second. Separation, la Separation of the fairing. DDO has confirmed it. One half, you see, on the left. There's another half on the right, which is out of camera range. Exposing to the elements our first passenger, star one. That's the blue box there, the blue and white box. We can separate the fairing now because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere at over 100 kilometers up. There's neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers. Nominal. We could also discard any dead weight to maximize the launcher's operation. There are several versions of the fairing available. Tonight we're using the long one, 17 meters tall. So we are into the second powered flight phase. The boosters have done their work, only the single lower stage engine burning now. It'll continue to burn for a total of nine minutes. And our speed is important because that's the role of the main stage. This uh, cryogenic system is not only highly efficient, but provides a push that can last a long time. There are two different propulsion systems on Ariane 5. There's cryogenics, as used in the main stage, generally more efficient than the solid propellant used in the boosters. Basically, the solids are for getting us off the ground and away from the pull of the Earth. Le pilotage est calme, la trajectoire est nominal. Cryogenics are for more precision orienting of the vehicle, and they allow a stage to be reignited, not in this version of the Ariane 5, but in another one. Ariane 5, of course, the heavy lift launcher. The other two members of the Ariane space family, Soyuz, lifting middle-sized payloads, two and three tons, roughly speaking. Nominal, and Vega, which is the light lift vehicle for missions of one ton, roughly, and sometimes less than that. If you just joined us, we've had a successful launch of Ariane space flight number 234. On board are two passengers, Star One and JC Set. We're going to a replay now. What will we hope be several replays? You can re experience those intense moments as Arian 5 took off from the pad just under six minutes ago. We have cameras at several of the half dozen sites that are stationed across the base and they furnish us with shots from different angles. 
we should have more footage later on. The closest observation site is called Toucan, and many of the VIPs are out there tonight. There's another, I think this might be from, this is from closer in the Toucan. The Toucan is closest to the base, about four kilometers away, two miles roughly. And when Ariane 5 lifts off from there, lights up the whole place. We are shortly going to be picked up by our first downrange tracking station. That'll be over the border in Brazil. The DDO continues to report that all is well on board. We had a beautiful launch and we are having a flawless flight. And Il reste moins de deux minutes de propulsion de l'EPC. Burn the propellant in the first stage. The DDO, DDO says there will be about two more minutes. Ariane's trajectory has been designed, of course, to be followed from the ground. The launcher is sending radar and telemetry back, and a network of stations is keeping constant watch on the health of her systems. This telemetry, as we have another replay, Telemetry is launch vehicle data, information on over a thousand parameters being collected and transmitted back to the ground stations every second by two transmitters inside the vehicle equipment bay. That's the white band just under the black bell-shaped structure there in the vehicle. Also telemetry being sent down by antennas outside the Ariane 5. They are recording all her functions throughout the flight. Other data are analyzed in real time. Recording all our functions, everything from motor to shutdowns to stage separations. Customers can get immediate information on about their spacecraft thanks to this uh, setup, which is very important. Other data are analyzed uh, after the flight to learn how the vehicle has Nominal. There's usually a complete analysis using the, these data. takes uh, takes place about a week after each launch. This is how we validate how the vehicle performed on its mission. Now you can imagine the enormous archives this gives Arian Space, a wealth of technical information going back to the very first launch of Ariane, Ariane 1, 1979, Christmas Eve. We're in the second powered flight phase, the single engine core stage burning now and about to shut off. You'll see on the left the little blue flame on the animation shut off and it just Extinction has. De PC sur commande de guidage. And the DDO confirms it. And separation de PC. of the lower stage and ignition, as you saw, of the upper stage motor. All these three commands given by the onboard computer Allumage de l'ESC. in the on given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. After separation, the lower stage falls into the Pacific off the coast of Peru. And we are now in the third powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that will burn until plus 2520, or for 15 minutes roughly in all. With separation of the lower stage, Ariane 5 has used up all of its 175 tons of propellant that was in the lower stage and has lost another 14,000 kilos of dry mass, which was the lower stage. She also has lost uh, 240 tons of fuel in each booster, which she burned up earlier. So most of her weight, as you will have realized, the job of the upper stage is to take the satellites to their injection point, position them for separation, and then release them into space. That's its propulsion role. But she also has a second role, and that comes during Ariane 5's ballistics phase, comes later on in the flight, and we'll have more on that in a moment. If you just joined us, Ariane 5's last mission of the year, her 11th flight going smoothly. With ignition of the upper stage, we're into the latter half of the mission and we can focus on the satellites.